Hell yeah, brother. It is go time. I recommend stability control off for most driving conditions. That's how we Quite a bit of wheel spin. <laughs> Woo, not slow. Not slow at all. This thing boogies. Uh, there we go. Take a look at that. All the high voltage connections right in there. Hello, so, good morning, and welcome to Far Hills, New Jersey. Um, we are preparing for a hopefully record breaking transcontinental cannonball record in a lucid air. Our plan is to leave at roughly three o'clock in the morning tonight. It is, I don't know, 9.20 in the morning on a Monday. And um, yeah, basically this is the preparation for our cannonball run in the Lucid. We flew in, Drew and Michaela are flying in. We got a whole bunch of logistics you'll find out through this video, but ultimately we're going to go pick up at our advantage, which maybe you've already heard about through the stories on out of spec reviews and out of spec motoring, but um, Polestar has been cool enough to loan us an advantage, which is the Polestar 1, which both Alyssa and Michaela, the girls, are going to drive ahead of us because it's a combustion car. And if they get enough ahead of us, the plan is to have them pull into DC fast charging stations because it's a combustion car that can DC fast charge as a plug-in hybrid and essentially uh, test the chargers for us along the way. Will the theory work? We're not totally sure. It was just a crazy idea I had, and I was like, ah, oh, Polestar will never get us one. They don't have any, and then, yes. So I'll tell you the story about the Polestar one on the way. It's insane. They literally pulled their car out of their Heritage Collection Museum, and it's the CEO's personal Polestar that they're letting us use. It's wild. But we have um, the Volvo V90 over here, Timon's dad's car, and that's what we're gonna take over to Polestar because we're going to Volvo HQ, so that, we should take the Volvo to Volvo. So there's Timon's mom heading out. Where's she going? In the oh chiropractor in her F-150. And uh, <laughs> there's my dad's Model 3. We actually drove last night at like one in the morning to Connecticut to get the Model 3. So my dad, who's driving currently up in our Lucid Air that we're gonna be using for this cannonball, he's driving up from Florida right now. He's currently in Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, we're jumping in the V90, which is one of my favorite cars of all time. Maybe not this particular spec. Yeah, if it wasn't a cross country, it'd be better. Yeah, if it was like a blue R design. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's okay. Um, we're going to take this to go get the Polestar 1, which is definitely going to be cool. So um, let's head over there and we'll tell you the story along the way. But first stop, Starbucks. Well, you join me at full throttle racing a Mazda CX-9 over here. I'm going to keep it pegged. Getting in the cannonball spirit. <laughs> Chop. <laughs> what you gotta do? That's the hazards. hazards on, full BMW mode. <laughs> um, anyway, we're on our way to Mawa, New Jersey, which is um, yeah, not uh, I guess farther away than we thought it was from yeah. your house. So sorry to the guys at Polestar, but um, so we're ripping to get over there. We got. Uh, let's explain what's going on here. This video will come out after our cannonball videos, I imagine. So you already know we're hopefully made it across the country. I don't know what happened. Hopefully you can tell us. Leave a comment. Let us know what's going to happen. Um, but basically, we're going to try and drive across the country in a lucid air and break not our record, but our friend Ryan from the Kilowatts set a record in a Model S. And I, ideally, we're not here to like set times. We just want to push technology and see how fast the car can really go, given the current infrastructure. Ah, oh, he overtook us. But, um, and look, the first EQB I've ever seen on the road. That looks so terrible. The non-electric one looks better. That is a definite EQB driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 299 lease special right there to get an electric Mercedes. <laughs> um, anyway, Polestar said, well, I, I called Polestar. I said, we really want, you know, the one car that's a plug-in hybrid uh, that also CCS fast charges that uh, we can have run ahead of us and basically, you know, as we arrive to a charger, they unplug and head to the next one and kind of always stay in front of us across the drive. There were actually three cars that could have worked in theory, but the Polestar was the only one. The Polestar one is, of course, what we chose. And that's what we're going to pick up. We also could have chosen the Karma Rivero which probably would have broken down before we even got it to New York City. <laughs> and so that's like not a reliable choice. And then um, there's a new Mercedes GLE 450E, which we actually have on press load next week or the week after. 
uh, that has 60 kilowatt DC fast charging and a plug-in hybrid. I'm not a fan of plug-in hybrids having fast charging, by the way, but we need it for this run. And um, ultimately, we decided on the Polestar 1 because it was on sale. We could get access to the car, and it will hopefully work. It's a proven platform. Even though it's very complicated, they do really well. And I've spent a lot of time with Polestar, so I can help Melissa and Michaela optimize the car. So uh, my understanding is when I called Polestar, I was like, hey guys, can we like borrow one? They're like, Kyle, we don't make this car anymore. We don't have any, like, what are you talking about? I was like, you gotta have one somewhere. And they're like, yes, it's in our museum, <laughs> in the heritage collection. And I was like, great, we'll take it. And they're like, uh, what? So they called Greg, who's the CEO of Polestar USA. And Greg was like, I'm in, go for it, take the car. And it's his personal car. So, so cool of them to uh, let yeah, us. that's awesome. Uh, I mean, yeah, have you ever heard of another and car company? First off, good thing it's not gold. Yeah, thank God it's the not CEO one has gold. a little bit of taste. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that 50 gold edition, that yeah. was not it. <laughs> we saw that in, where were we when we saw uh, that for the first time? In Munich or? Munich or Denver. No, no Denver was white. Denver was white. I think Munich, we saw the gold one because we saw the precept. Yeah. Um, Anyway, Polestar, just super cool of them to let us borrow this. And then they were like, yeah, just keep it for a little bit, do some stuff with that in Colorado, and then eventually figure out how to get it back to us. So it's like a Polestar 1 long-term loan two years after stop of production. I've never heard of anything <laughs> like this. The, the Polestar guys are the coolest people Yeah, on super the cool of them. So cool. So we thought it would be fitting, of course, to take the V90 cross-country to Volvo HQ and uh, pick up the Polestar, and then we'll convoy back. The plan for today is to get everything ready for the Cannonball, which we're leaving on early tomorrow morning, really late tonight. So the Lucid's on its way up here. My dad's about two hours away. Drew is flying in from Denver. The three people in the car will be Drew, me, and Timon, the, the typical Cannonball team that we did with the Tycon. We're doing it again. It worked out really well. Everyone brings their own little thing to the team. Drew's the maniac. Yeah. He's like, if we have to go really fast, we put Drew in the driver's yeah. seat. Time and you're great at the long stretches at night. I can do uh, the fast driving, no <laughs> the problem. Middle stuff. The, the, <laughs> and getting us into LA, I'm always right. good at that. Just you know, full New York mode. Uh, but uh, then I, I handle all the technical numbers, calculations, the, stuff. the nerd stuff. But I also, uh, yeah, pretty pretty good with the fast sections. Our, our whole goal here is to avoid police activity. We'll talk about all the countermeasures we'll be putting in the cars. Um, my main concern actually is the girls being able to stay ahead of us in the whole start. I think they're gonna end up skipping a lot more chargers than we're thinking, but we'll play that by ear because uh, ultimately when we stop, we if we catch them by the end of a leg, there's no reason for them to go to the charger. Right, but it's also, it's only most of their stuff is necessary at the beginning, right? Yeah, so so we have a lot of, we'll talk about that when we plan the drive, but we have a lot of Signet chargers, which are having major issues with uh, the Lucid and, and other high voltage cars. Welcome to New Jersey, this is what you see. Police everywhere. What hey, the at least they're using Waze in Colorado, no one uses No one it. uses Waze in Colorado, yeah. But um, all is good, we're only about 20 minutes away from getting the uh, Polestar 1, and Man, I can't wait. I just can't believe they're letting us borrow this car. So The coolest trunk in any car. Right, because when you open it, you get all those high voltage yeah, connections. Yeah, sweet. So cool. Um, yeah, we just filmed the ID7 yesterday. That video just went up. So uh, that's why we were in town and Volkswagen uh, was like, we skipped the unveil today, but we filmed the car yesterday. Got a lot of things to charge. Yep. A lot of uh, screens and phones and devices to mount in cars today. All of it. All right, bye. Here we are pulling into Volvo and Polestar's headquarters. Um, so it says Polestar's down this way. Let's just go All see. Visitor parking. This Look at too. how many chargers they have here. So they have the ABB chargers. Let's just take a look to see. Wow, Polestar one in white right there. That's that cool. Looks good. Um, so we got charge points. Literally everyone's plugged in. You got the 50 kilowatts. You got charge point level twos. That roof box looks pretty nice. Um, I wonder if my friend Tyler's here. I should tell him that I'm at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And uh, yeah, this Polestar was DC charging. Wow, they have a million chargers. Yeah, they have. Holy smokes, they're three, all in. Three lines of chargers. Oh, look, it's one of the Polestar 2 BST editions. That looks really good. That looks so good with the painted arches and the Polestar 1 wheels. Wow. Yeah, look at that thing. That is hot. 
Oh, looks sweet. It doesn't have the stripes, so I don't. I, maybe it's not a BST, but that is. I'd drive that. Yeah, that is a good looking car. Max, you should have bought that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, okay, cool. Wow, there's so many Volvo products. This yep. thing can't plug in. They have they have so many chargers. Wow. All right, where do we park, Timon? I think we no have to idea. go down to seven 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 down this way. There's a V60. Oh, he's waving at us like we're supposed to be here. Like we're Jeep guys. <laughs> we got a Volvo on Jersey plates. So we blend in. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. Please buckle up. That is the most Volvo sign <laughs> to ever exist. <laughs> okay, well let's uh, let's run on down this way. I think we're at a dead end. I think we're at a dead end. Okay. Well, I'll just call him and see what's going on. But this is pretty. B five. Oh, yeah, yeah, B is the mild hybrid. Okay, love to see it. Let's go find this Polestar. This is yep. sick. See you, Tyler. Great running into you. <laughs> nice S60. Congratulations. Thank you. And got it juicing up over here. It's like great to see our friend Tyler. Look at how many chargers they have here. Just rows and rows, two DC chargers over here. Tyler was saying this is the largest charging installation in New Jersey. Makes sense. Yeah, I think it <laughs> is. Uh, someone brought a GTR yeah, to work. I'm one day with a GTR and a Polestar building. <laughs> <laughs> so many Polestars and Volvos here. It's as you would expect, uh, expected. But here it is, our Polestar 1. What a machine. This thing is looking freaking awesome. There's the Thor's hammer lights coming into life, looking very nice. And um, so this was Gregor's car, the CEO of Polestar, his now personal he's got daily. That awesome looking Polestar 2. Right, so the Polestar 2 we saw up front with the BST edition, that's his, that which is sweet. sick. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we actually thought this was going to be matte gray, is what someone told us, but it's perfect. White on white. The seats look like they're in unbelievably good condition. Yeah, I think this thing has eight. 8,000 miles. 8, miles on it. The guys in there were saying just ahead of our drive, they put a whole new high voltage battery pack in it for us, Diamond. So stuff. quality stuff. Uh, it's fully fueled. It's got 8,532 miles. Everything <laughs> looks it great. It's daily driven, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you must have a short commute. Um, and like everything feels and looks awesome. Look at the size of the tub here. This is so cool. Um, yeah, let's get in and uh, here we go. We just wanted to make sure we do need to double check at DC charges, but we'll do that at an EA station somewhere. But there you go. That's why we got this car, fuel and charging. Let's, uh, let's run over to the V90 and test this thing out. And we're on, seat on the ground. There we go. We got almost a full charge, almost 70 miles of range on a plug-in hybrid. How accurate is that though? I don't know. Auto. AC on high, nope, 68, seems reasonable. Um, we gotta get the everything hooked up sound system wise, but where did the seatbelt go? Uh, carbon fiber everywhere in this thing. This is just fully maxed out. Auto hold is on. I would hope so for the CEO. Yep, <laughs> so we have all of the, uh, all the stuff here. We'll let the girls get their uh, Gothenburg concert hall Thing selected into B mode for sort of a one pedal driving experience. And off we go then for the first few. Wow, brakes are really touchy. For the first few inches yeah, in compared the Compared to the V90, yeah. these are three times the size. <laughs> um, wow, this, we have, I think we're going to have some cool stories with this car type. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to daily this thing until they make me give it back. They said they, they got another one somehow to use while this is gone. Yeah, I, I'll take your uh, Rivian. Off yeah. your hands and okay. then daily this. Sure, I mean, you can borrow the yeah. any time. That's all right. And a reserve for, for GH. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, we parked the V90 just over here. And uh, what we're going to do is then run back to your house in Far Hills. We have to do uh, a Costco run to get snacks yeah. for everyone. We need to get all the electronics and wired. One of us has to go pick up Drew. I, yes, one of us has to get Drew. I don't even know. So there's two USB A ports in here. Do you want to drive this, Timon? It's up to you. Yeah, you I can mean, drive it. That's all right. Do you want me to pick up Drew in this or no in the V90? Because new work is an hour away, and he lands in an hour. Oh, okay, well then take the V90 to get him, and I'll okay. run back to the house. That's cool. Good. Thankfully, you're on top of this. <laughs> I just checked. <laughs> yeah. All right, because I got to get the detectors and everything mounted in here. Yep. This, I guess, is how they shine the Polestar logo on the roof when it's dark. Right. Just put tape over it. <laughs> 
This is so sick. Yeah, I love this thing. Yep, me too. All right, well, I'll see you in an hour, and uh, I guess you're going to get Drew. Yep, bye. Well, heading out now in the Polestar 1. Thanks for visiting. Please buckle up. I certainly will, and I am. So, um, pretty sweet. Just kicked on the combustion engine just to get it through its warm-up cycle. I just want to cycle the car. This thing sat, I believe, in a museum or in their heritage collection for a while. So, I just want to make sure that everything's working nicely and normally and it's all good before uh, we go on this run. So, I'm going to kind of run it through every setting, every mode. There's a whole bunch of different modes and settings you can choose from here. I just have it in normal hybrid now to kind of drain the battery pack slightly. We could also put it in full electric, but want to make sure the combustion engine's good. And um, yep, all should be pretty good for us. What a great experience. The guys at Volvo and Polestar are just the best and so nice of them to let us borrow this. And here we are just arriving back. Were you just getting back too? Did some groceries? Nice. And uh, yep, just using that camera to back this thing on up. Park. Uh, I ripped it up the hill as hard as I could in electric mode just to stress test the electric stuff. Maybe got a little bit of air time. This thing shreds. The Oleans are set pretty soft, I would say. I think it's factory. Um, you can definitely bump them up though. Make sure there's nothing in there. I just love this car. I think I have to own one. Oh man, that was an expensive drive. Look at how sick this thing looks. So freaking cool. And the best part is, of course, the, uh, the trunk here. Let's see if I can show this to you. Key trunk. Uh, there we go. Take a look at that. All the high voltage connections right in there. So sweet. Have you ever seen one of these? Yes, I, I remember this. Yeah, we had it at the track. We did a track review of it. Yeah, so no suitcase. Yeah, barely, barely any room. <laughs> we were gonna put all the heavy stuff in this car, but then we were like, oh wait, there's no space because it's filled with batteries. It has a bigger battery than our Leaf. Really? Yeah, it's got a 35 kilowatt hour battery or so. <laughs> yeah, this just got a new battery yesterday. Wow. Yeah, they put a fresh one in for our drive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where are we going to put all this? Oh, I don't, I mean, between... Why do we have baby a box of baby wipes? Baby wipes are the biggest necessity on a trip like this. This many? We got a lightweight. We're trying to break a record here, not go on vacation. I mean, we can obviously leave some behind, but I just got baby wipes. Okay. Because we need them. Oh um, yeah, steak strips. Now we're talking <laughs> extra thick cut. I got you salsa. Oh, thank you. But That's nasty. I won't eat that. You won't eat this? No, it's not Tostitos. It's probably better. No. Okay, whatever. I tried. I'll eat thank it. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. Plant so, protein superfoods. Get that out of here. It's not for you. So my main thing was energy drinks and getting waters and so that's really why I went to Costco. Most of the snacks are just because I went down the snack aisle. But, okay uh, well space is a consideration. Um, so and you, I got pillows. You got and pillows? Blanket. Pillows and blankets. Nice. Yeah. And one blanket not one. for us. Yeah, you guys okay just charging on the wall outlet here? Yeah. Very cool. And look who's arriving now. Somehow Timon and my dad are getting here at the same time but there's the cannonball car. At least we hope we got it on the aero wheels. Uh, so part of the prep was my dad brought it to Lucid. They had to actually fix the air conditioning on the car because a hose fell off, which doesn't seem good. And now it's on the 18 inch wheels or 19 inch wheels, excuse me, arrows. I'm in sprint mode. Oh, wow. <laughs> so fast. It's got the covers in. Man, it looks terrible on these wheels. But uh, hey, they're for what we need for efficiency. Then we got the V90 and the Polestar. So it looks like Drew's here too. Hello? Yeah, I did not get a video of him coming. Why? I had to pee so badly. Oh, really? So we have no Drew pickup footage. So here this he is. This is it. He's here. He arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and Michaela's going to take a later flight because I think they're giving her like two grand to go like an hour later. So, seems good. And there's uh, Bailey. Oh, just so you know, Dad, they have a dog here. Yeah. It's, his name is Boss. He's a puppy. Okay. He's a little puppy Rottweiler. He's so cute. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't asked him. I'm sure he's good with other dogs. He's just a baby. Hi, Bailey. All but right. he will pummel you. He can eat you in one bite. You think so? Oh, yeah. Boss is a little chomper. He's still a baby, so. Well, she'll learn. If she screams bloody murder, he will stop. Yeah, she's got to work it out. That's good friend. <laughs> he is so cute. Boss is the cutest dog 
Ever. You because he doesn't stop on pay. Long time when he see you legs. Good to see you. Long time when he see Getting everything in order ahead of the drive, making sure we have our modern spare tire with us. Uh, cool that they came out with a Lucid kit, actually. So that fits perfectly in the front trunk, right at the bottom and below the shelf. So it actually doesn't really take up any usable space. Um, we should actually just run on those. We'd get more range. <laughs> <laughs> just doing a little test fit, making sure all the modern spare components work. I think we should use the, uh, I don't know, we were considering bringing a floor jack with us. Drew will make the final determination. Yeah, it's got a massive one, which... Yeah, it's a huge one. Run. What about if we just run to Walmart and get like a two-ton small compact? That, that's what I'd like, is yeah, basically the smallest version. Yeah. yeah. So what you install on there? Uh, well, I got this uh, Garmin Tread Overland. Actually, Garmin sent it to us. A long not, time ago. Not for this run. <laughs> <laughs> I was interested in it. I emailed them and then it never showed up. And I thought about it like, I don't know, six months later and they're like, oh, sorry, it got lost. And then it came and then we traveled and I forgot we had it. So I figured this would be great to use for this run and it will track all of our data across the whole run. So it's a way for us to verify our run, nice. essentially. Yes. No one can have access to the data though. No one? No, I'll self-destruct it. Ooh. No, they can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't quite get the uh, the angle I'm looking for here. I think that might be good. That'll be perfect. Yep. Okay. Perfection and uh, locked. Locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. And so I gotta clamp clamp down on the clamp. Okay. Clamped. That that's not going anywhere. Obligatory. And we can uh, kick it on. Hit agree. Open this thing up. <laughs> Just, there it goes. Very fast. <laughs> and then we can go to track recorder and this will log our whole thing. So that's pretty good. It's a little bit big in the corner, but uh, we could also put it in the back. Yeah. Which may not be a bad idea. Just don't want anybody to really bump the screen in case they touch it. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll go here. We'll move it if we need to throughout the drive. I need to hook it up to uh, a USB outlet. Speaking of, we have, we have USB-A in this car and see who, why would you put USB-A in a car? Old people. Old people, I guess. Uh, we are charging up the car right now at nine kilowatts. So six hours, 40 minutes till full, but we'll probably bring it to a fast charger and then leave it at Red Ball to top up is our plan. So we got that's the time to do. What's Michaela's plan? We gotta pick her up at 5.30. Okay. So someone's gotta leave here in an hour and 15 or so. Yep. Okay. We gotta get the phone apps. This uh, retracts. Wow. Oh, yeah, we said illusion. <laughs> but I don't know if there's any USB-C ports in here. So that's not very helpful. This is like uh, unusable space, really, because we want to have the screen down. Put your snacks in there. Yeah, we can put some snacks in there. I remember on our cannonball with the Tycon, this whole screen failed in that car and my heated seat was stuck on full. You remember that time in? Oh, yeah. we, when we yeah. watched the video, that's when you were sweating in the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, and it was like on like way hotter than normal. So I was just like, tss, tss, tss. Oh my God. Yeah, I was like trying to put stuff under my butt. <laughs> that car had a lot of problems. Um, great. Well, uh, I need to get myself a user account here, which my mom has one. My dad has one profile settings. Okay, profile management. Create a new profile. And my dad is just pulling away in the Model 3, heading back to Connecticut over there. Alyssa's gonna take the Polestar to pick up Michaela at the airport. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll learn the car and play around with the settings and yeah. do all that stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Sure. Timing can show you how it all works. And uh, Drew and I are gonna go get the car washed, get it charged up at a DC fast charger and um, yeah, and then actually go get one of the spare tires. We have a full-size 21-inch wheel. We took one of the fronts. It's a narrower one. Threw it in the back, but when they put on the arrows at the Lucid Service Center, I guess my dad wanted to save a few bucks, and he didn't end up buying new uh, TPMS with valve stems. So we're going to have him just put a basic valve stem in the other wheel, mount the tire, fill it with air, and then we'll have a full-size spare as well as the mod modern spare in the front. We're still working out our leave time and our charging plans and all that stuff. But um, I guess they just optimized these wheels as well to go to the 19 inch plan. We need to come up with a social media plan so no one knows we're doing this. We're really not good at planning these things. 
but we are going to send it. So that's uh, that's what we're going to do now. Your average Lucid driver loves that. Yeah, that solid mount noise. I guess they are fixing it, but it's loud. That sounds great. I like it. Um, yep. So we had about 50%, and uh, we're going to go out and run errands. And Drew's getting used to the car. Starts up in comfort mode. We got to get some air con running. So there we go. And off we go. We are squeezing through, and. Uh, we are preconditioning now the battery. Now, the one thing I hate is that it shows me in miles because that's not going to work out that well. Units percentage. And now it will say, I know my way around the system. All right, 57% state of charge. Pretty good. We're just going to do a quick launch control. So left foot, there you go. Mm -hmm. Launch mode activated. Quite a bit of wheel spin. <laughs> Woo, not slow. Not slow at all. This thing boogies. <laughs> and on the 19s, on the 245s, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> the front tires give them no traction. The good old Signet Surge. We're doing our first drive here, and this is what we're really worried about on this run is this problem right here, where on Signet chargers, especially with high voltage cars, but we've seen it on lower ones, just cannot deliver a consistent charge which seems pretty crazy. So uh, really disappointed to see that here. Looks like there might be a technician, someone who's walking back that way, but uh, this is this is really a disaster and, and could cause us the run. So we're doing a little bit of charge testing. We tried to plug into this unit. So that one was Signet surging. This one here, and by the way, that's a software issue confirmed by some friends in the industry. But uh, it seems that this one here is, uh, even though saying ready and operable, just not working at all, unfortunately. This one over here uh, is uh, is doing a Signet Surge, but only 50 kilowatts, 30. Just not any way that we're gonna break a cannonball record if this is what we have to deal with. So uh, what we're gonna do is that F-150 just unplugged and it seems to be making no difference at all. Cable cooling's just wrapping up. We're gonna give this maybe five minutes to see if it levels out, see if maybe we should deal with it. And if it doesn't, after five minutes, sort itself out, we may pop over to this charger here. Well, here we go. It's my first time driving this thing. Gonna go pick up my sister from the airport. And I do need to get everything set up in here in terms of my phone and all of that connecting Bluetooth devices. Gotta do all that and gotta go pick up my sister. So let's head in the Polestar 1 all this room we've got here and see if suitcases even fit in this car so let's head on out all right my phone is set up next is the mirrors here i think that'll do for that and then the right side by the way you guys are gonna laugh about how my sister's seating position is so i'll just let you guys wait for that one but now let's well, we're already in drive. So let's just get on going. We are charged up now. We moved over to this unit. It had a very solid, smooth charging experience. 55 kilowatts at 90%. I think by the time we unplug here, get the tire mounted over at the tire shop, because we are going to bring one of the full-size spares and just have a tire shop mount it uh, over at Costco. Tire really windy right now. I think we'll be uh, good to go. So let's unplug here and we can level two charge it to 100% when we get back to the house. That should complete just in time for the run. So let's uh, let's go, especially as a line is forming at this very underserved station. And rockin' will you join us at uh, Yankees Auto Repair, Yankees Auto Repair, I don't know. And it's uh, great, we're just getting the tire mounted right here. We went to Costco Tire, they said we need a membership. These guys said we're good to go. So it's all we need. <laughs> all right, $20 later, they got that thing mounted, super cool. Uh, we were, they were wondering what the heck we were doing with the car. I told them about the run and they were huge Cannonball fans. So I was like, don't say anything. And now I can't get in the car. So uh, <laughs> he doesn't know where to hit. <laughs> Thank you. I think just put it in park yeah. or uh, actually. Park. Uh, oh, really? That one. There you go. Okay. Sick. Well, now we run home and sleep. Yes. Well, we were on our way back to the house just to do uh, some topping up, but I can notice here in the Lucid, we were playing around with some of the stability control settings. And in full mode, it says recommended for most driving conditions, which is what you would expect. 
But when you turn it off, it also says it's recommended for most driving conditions. <laughs> and if you go to partial, that's also recommended for most driving conditions. The screenshot of this though, just makes me love Lucid because they recommend stability control off for most driving conditions. That's how we drive, Drew. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, never. Uh, very good. Well, uh, cruising along, the car's quiet. We got uh, everything prepped. I think uh, it's about as good as it's gonna get, really. Well, you can see we're back home now. We threw the Lucid on the uh, level two charger, just a NEMA 1450 using the Lucid connector. You can just see it out there. It says it'll be done at 100% state of charge in two hours, which is good because we're gonna leave slightly after two hours from now. And so I think that'll be good for the top to pack, uh, to the, for the pack to top balance, for us to get a little bit of a nap in before the drive, because again, we're gonna be awake for the next 40 hours or so, hopefully with little naps for the third person. It's why we run with three people, but we have a whole bunch of video uh, documentation equipment to sort of film all of this for you guys. And uh, of course the electrical tape. Can you give me a second, I'll tell you where you can go. Uh, Michaela, you're here. I am here. So you and Alyssa are gonna take the Polestar on this drive. Yep. And you just finished work. Yes. And flew here. <laughs> straight from the hospital, drove to the airport, and came here. And Did I'm you leave your stuff. car at the airport? Yeah. Oh, nice. Fine. The fine oh, fine. Car. They'll charge it up for you. Uh, I had a pretty good charge. I charged okay. at the um, hospital last night, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, cool. And uh, so you're going from ID4 to Polestar 1. Have you ever even heard of the Polestar 1 before this drive? Nope. That was the first time I've ever seen one. So. Yeah, cool. Very nice. Yeah. Well, you ready to rip? Sure You're going to drive fast? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need binoculars? Yeah. Yeah, we can get you a set. Okay. Yeah, no, tomorrow night. Yeah, and I also have um some final preparations before we uh get out of here. We got two fresh waters in the Polestar. We got whole bunch of cigarette lighters going on with USB ports everywhere for the girls. Got a camera back here to run a time lapse for them. Hopefully that doesn't impede their rear visibility. Uh, there actually, actually isn't that bad in this car. We are just juicing up the car because um, why not? We may as well get some charge in it. I wanted to make sure it charges and it definitely does. And uh, they got some funky Arizona manufacturer plates that definitely won't cause any problem with the police. Not understanding manufacturer cars. <laughs> Could be some interesting stories. Let's hope not. Um, any extra of these we're going to get rid of. We just don't want any unnecessary stuff in the cars. And uh, I think they're looking pretty good over here in the Polestar. Timon's getting the Lucid set up. He's just getting all the wires running everything. We leave here in about two hours. I really need to go to bed. So I'm going to take a quick nap and we're on the road for 40 hours. Hell yeah, brother. It is go time. I just uh, laid down in bed for an hour or so. Didn't really get any sleep. Timon and Drew slept earlier today. So I imagine uh, maybe the first leg I'm not gonna do. I'll try and rest up on the first long leg, the 100% charge. Let Drew and Timon take on that run. The uh, cooling on the Polestar 1. Thing is loud running the cooling for the onboard, onboard chargers. Just uh, about to head out. Here's the Lucid sitting at 100%. We're gonna run into the city. The plan is to have the girls leave one hour ahead of us in the Polestar. They are going to be testing chargers along the way ahead of us. So we kind of want them to stay ahead, look for any traffic conditions, any uh, other things that might slow us down. And uh, that's their job and to relay the information back to us. So the goal is they're gonna shred this thing and try and stay in front of us, which really shouldn't be hard because it's mostly a combustion car that uh, of course they can plug into a charger if they get 15, 20 minutes ahead of us, they can get over to a charger, check out the ones that work, reserve the 350 kilowatt with this thing. That's kind of the idea. We're just gonna send it in the Lucid is our plan. And uh, of course, safety is top priority. We're not here to piss anyone off, to put anyone in danger. I mean, our driving speeds aren't gonna be nearly what the combustion cannonball guys do. It's just like a quick road trip, more or less. Nothing actually unusual for what, you know, normal people drive on a trip. We're just gonna be not stopping. And uh, about to load, load the final stuff into the cars and get the heck out of here. Kyle. Good luck, guys. Thank Be you. Safe. Appreciate it. Welcome, and hope everything goes well.
Thanks, girl. Love you, brother. Be safe. I'll send you the tracker as well. Oh, that's why. Tell your parents I said hello. And hopefully I'll stick to All right. Loading up the Polestar, we're heading over to the start location, which is we're running the traditional route, which is Red Ball to Portofino. So East 31st Street to um, yeah, Portofino Hotel and Marina in Redondo Beach, California. And I think, Alyssa, you're actually going to set the plug-in hybrid cannonball record. Heck yeah. <laughs> we just need Boss to get out of the way. And Karen. And uh, big thanks to Karen and Jan always for hosting us pre-cannonball. It's sort of become the tradition, if you will. So very touchy brake pedal in the Polestar 1. So why am I driving this? Well, I wanted to teach Alyssa a little bit about the car and also take some time for her to extra rest up and not deal with getting into New York City. <laughs> Only out. Only out. And uh, Michaela is sitting with Drew and Timon so that she can learn their points on spotting because she's mostly going to be eyes up looking at the road and everything. Um, I just want to let you know, Alyssa, I did put a time-lapse camera back here, but it doesn't seem to get in the way too much. Okay. All right. So we're going to run... Um, power mode on the way over there just to keep the engine on keep it warmed up ready to go for you we're going to fill it up with premium fuel just so we make sure we have a fresh tank of fuel on it on the way nice they're going to drop it off at the garage and make sure it gets 100 percent charge mm -hmm. and honestly i think that car has more range than this one like you may have to stop to fuel up oh really yeah i also don't know which way we're going here so um, um is it not in yeah i didn't put it in now okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's hook up your phone to CarPlay, get this thing going, get everything set. And it's always a little bit hectic before the drives, and then you just sit and it's boring for a while. And all the way, also, I feel like the seat's buckling up against something back here. That's my backpack. Okay, well. Yeah, yeah. Or gonna... my suitcase. Okay. No, I had it set to where I would be sitting. Oh, well, not me. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, look at that thing crossing the road. What fox. was that, a fox? It's a fox. What did it say? <laughs> all right, so let's get this in now before we start taking everyone on. Might be. Uh, and if you're pacing with a car that sees in front of you or behind you, also just let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know if we're coming up to you that we slow down a bit. Um, see here you can see that there's one on our side and the other side, so it's probably in the median. Okay. Um, which it should give us a notification. Our play is not doing a very good job of telling us where we need to go, but the view of the city is beautiful tonight. The weather, we picked this time because the weather just passed about a few hours ago. It's been raining this whole weekend, and most of the country, thankfully, is pretty dry right now. 